Now, I'm a massive Married at First Sight fan. Well, to be fair, COVID sort of turned me into one, didn't it? Um, I'm very excited about our next guest here this morning. Ella Ding is a participant on this season of Married at First Sight and is used to having her entire relationship with her husband, Mitch, broadcast to the world. Take a look at this example. I came into the final day. I asked you, are we leaving here in a relationship or are we not? Because I wasn't sure based on things you've said. You said, I don't really know. It's hard to answer. It's hard to answer. I don't, I don't know whether you can, like... That's why I feel insecure. Yeah, I can see why you feel insecure, Ella, because every time you ask him, he's like, I don't know, I can't make up my mind. Is he just too young for this? Look, looking back on the footage now and re reliving it all, like it really does put things into perspective, I will admit. Um, but he really did struggle using assertive language and he, you know, as you would have seen, he was very uncomfortable throughout the entire experiment, like the whole cameras and all that sort of stuff made him very uncomfortable. So Mitchell and I did establish a lot of the foundations off camera, which obviously production hated. And yeah, it was, it was hard because like I'm an open book and Mitchell's quite the opposite. So like I was sort of torn in the middle all the time, but yeah, he... He wasn't very good with his words. I will definitely say that. <laughs> Do you think he was there? Because I get the sense you genuinely, if it was the right guy and it all worked out, that you would have, you were in this for love. Do you think he was? Do you think anyone is? Yeah, I mean, look, it's like the odds are definitely against you going into something like this with finding love. You can only hope so hard that you'll be matched with someone who you can just bond with and create a friendship with because it's very unlikely, as we've seen on most seasons, like there's about one or two couples that walk away, like actually in love. Um, in terms of his intentions, well, he got scouted. So I don't know if you guys know that, but I do know that. And now you know that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Mitchell did get scouted and straight away that was already for me a bit like, oh, questionable, like is he here for the right reasons? Um, you know, he's a model, like you definitely do question those things. But by this stage in the experiment, you'd like to think that this person does have genuine feelings for you. Like you want to remain positive. Mm. Um, and I just continued to try to stay, you know, true to myself, put my heart on the line as I always do. Um, but it's the risk that you take going into something like this, like huge risk that you take that you're probably going to you know, maybe get your heart broken or be embarrassed or humiliated or just grow from it. Like, it really just it depends how you want to take it. Yeah. Ella, um, what about the the photos that I've seen of Mitch and Tamara together after the filming of the show? Are they, are they in a relationship now? Um, look, I know as much as you know, really, at this stage. Um, yeah, I've seen a lot of articles. I've been sent a lot of comments and screenshots of things. Um, but for now, I'm just going to try and, you know, block it out because media, people make up stuff. Um, and when the time is right, I'll do my own digging. Yeah. Let, let's talk about Olivia, who's like the elephant yeah. in the room. So, that, <laughs> so like Olivia is, is the villain in the show and then there's Dominica, who's the bit of a hothead, had the OnlyFans account with a nude picture of her. Um, do you know if those two have spoken since filming finished? They definitely have not spoken. Can confirm, absolutely not. Is she as um, bad, is Olivia as bad in real life as she seems on the show? Look, she's not like a mean person 24-7. That would be so exhausting. Um, but I think when she has her moments, yeah, like as you would have seen, she can be um, pretty mean and intentional and... Yeah, I don't think in this case she can really blame the edit because everything that she has said has been her choice. It came out of her uh, mouth, right? What, what about yeah. the whole OnlyFans thing? She, she yeah. said she maintains that her friends went and Googled Dominica and found this photo of her. And they, do you believe that or do you think actually she did that? Um, I think it would have been, to be honest, I think it would have been Olivia and her friends because after that dinner party when M Mitchell and I actually found out, we went back to our room and we tried to Google search it and we couldn't find anything. Like, we were looking for so long. 
So it wasn't just a simple Google search. That is for sure. I can confirm. This is the thing about OnlyFans. Not that I know. <laughs> but, but if you want to, <laughs> if you want to find someone on OnlyFans, you've actually got to have an OnlyFans to make it happen, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you do. I also haven't. I didn't know much about OnlyFans until it's all come out in the media and all the, the laws and stuff around it as well. Um, but yeah, she definitely like had to go digging. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely Liv- wasn't a Google Liv- search. Olivia had her detective hat on at some point, didn't she? Um, yeah. The you know the um, the uh, thing about the show that I have sort of found most vile frankly, is the way that Tamara talks about her... What's her husband's name? Is it Brent or Brent? Brent, Brent. Yeah. About Brent's um, job. You know, like, yeah. like really disparaging about being a waiter. Like, what's wrong with being a waiter? I know. Oh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being a waiter. And he actually made a very valid comment. He said, I probably, even when I was a waiter, I probably worked harder than you have. You know, anyone that works in hospitality, we know it's a grind, um, you're on your feet all day. You are cleaning up broken glass, spilt drinks. Fruit, like, you are literally working your ass off, really. Um, but I think the whole point of it was that she just didn't even know what he did because he wasn't a waiter. He was a venue manager. And there's so much more to his job and she never listened. She never cared to even, you know, show interest in what he really did. Um, yeah, that's that relationship was pretty toxic i'd say from the get-go yeah it sounds like quite a few of them were in summary we've got about 30 seconds ella i've really enjoyed talking to you you're an absolute delight do you think was the show worth it in the end for me overall yeah Yeah. um taking in that there was a lot of toxic energy um overall i had a really positive experience i have got friends for life and um yeah like i the whole experience was incredible the highs the lows I've just come out with so much personal growth and resilience and, like, I have learned so much about myself. But I will say definitely don't put yourself in something like this if you are not truly capable of handling being in the public eye. Um, And another tip, if you have any pre-existing, like, mild forms of anxiety or depression, do not do something like this. Like, I'm okay because I'm pretty level-headed, but I do know other participants are not coping and have not coped and even in filming time, just be really, really, really mindful of all that sort of stuff because it's intense. It's an experiment, genuinely. 